Welcome back to AMC Jedi Council. It's the Council. It's me, Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, and I have an array of the Star Wars Council today. First, on my left is brand new, first time on the Council. He's the editor-in-chief of Schmozno.com. He is Mark Yodi Riley. Hello, Jedi Council. Nice to have you, finally. Oh, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. And here he is on to my right. He'll be doing the news. You know him. You love him. It's Mark 2D2, Mark Ellis, what's up? That's what all the ladies call me when I go out Saturday night. <laughs> and her second appearance on the council, the host of Far, Far Away and from Fandango, it is the Smith Lord, Tiffany Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. It's a good one. That's yeah. a great one. Because I'm Lord. so serious and terrifying. You, you really are. are. You are. <laughs> now, normally what we do, we have, we have our different topics that we do. And today, instead of doing the Star Wars news up top, I want to bring up the fact that legendary actor Christopher Lee passed. Uh, he actually passed on about three, four days ago. We we're just getting the news today. And you know him from the Star Wars saga as Count Dooku as well. And it, just real quick, I wanted to get our thoughts on him. We talked about it on a movie talk today, but he was 93 years old. Uh, he lived a full life, but he brought so much to not only the Star Wars universe, but just film in general. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, to the horror galaxy. I mean, that's that's how he got his start. I mean, everybody knew him as uh, Dracula, and then he was a great villain in The Man with the Golden Gun and as Saruman. But what he was to the Star Wars universe is he's one of the bright spots in the prequels. And everybody knows I don't necessarily love the prequels. I find moments in each one of them that I enjoy. And the air of legitimacy that an actor like that mm -hmm. brought to the role of Count Dooku in and some and uh, so many of the performances in the prequels that are by good actors just fall a little flat because of all the green screen, all the other special effects going on, but not the case with Christopher Lee. He proved his chops as a master thespian by being believable in that role. Mm -hmm. Tiff? I mean, obviously, being a huge Lord of the Rings fan, but obviously a Star Wars fan, he's someone that you look to and you're like, he's such a great character actor. Um, and I just remember watching some of the extras on Lord of the Rings and he just talked about how in depth he wanted to get into the character and how he read the books and how a wizard wouldn't do this or would do this. And that's something where I just love it when you see that an actor is a true fan of the properties that they're working on. And I think that comes through and that's why as Count Dooku, he stands out in the prequels. Yodi? Yeah, I, I mean, it just is a sad day when you, you think that Christopher Lee is no longer going to be in all these great movies. Not only... I mean, I grew up with him somewhat. Yeah. Gremlins 2 he was in. Oh, right. And then right, right. The Lord of the Rings, of course, what you mentioned, and his love of those books. And he did, like you said, Mark Ellis, he brought legitimacy to the prequels. Yeah. He was a class act the whole way. Uh, I'm going to miss that guy. Well, you know what it is also is the fact that he made the... The, the name Dooku could have been terrible. <laughs> I mean, it is all in itself. But the fact when you picture who played Dooku... Mm -hmm. It legitimizes yeah. it pretty much, and when you have that word, legitimizes. Uh, legitimizes. Yeah. Uh, and he, but he <laughs> JT. made the Clone Wars. Now, when you look at Clone Wars, even I'm reading Dark Disciple right now, and when I read Dooku, I don't just go. <coughs> I think Christopher <laughs> Lee, yeah. and I think of the what he brought to the role. So yeah. our hats are off to, the, he was one of the best, and he was a legend, and yes, we will absolutely miss him, and the Star Wars universe will miss him. So moving on now, we, this is the part of the show that we simply call the Star Wars Movie News. This is everything that's happened in the world of the movie news over the past week or so since our last episode, and I'd actually really like to thank StarWars7News.com who updates all these stories from all over mm -hmm. the web, and it's a really great source to get all Star Wars news, and there's a lot of it this week. So, Mark, what's first today in the Star Wars movie news? Not only do we have a lot of Star Wars news, we got a lot of good news, too. Uh, most exciting, perhaps, is the fact that when we go to San Diego Comic-Con this year, <laughs> there's going to be some Star Wars stuff there. <laughs> Lucasfilm officially announced their schedule, and there's going to be panels covering the latest action figures, new novels, and, of course, that little movie coming out in December, The Force Awakens, where you're you're going to have Lucasfilm president and producer Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, Lawrence Kasdan, and special guest providing a special look at Star Wars The Force Awakens. Christian, what does this news mean to you? Y'all laughed at me. Y'all laughed at me when I said, I'm telling you, when I said... What I, you laughed know, at you, you about what? About the fact we laughed at you a lot. We were things. getting the trailer at Comic-Con. Um, you, no, I'm looking at you, but other people laughed. Okay. At me. And, when I, and I just, I just, I it just made sense to me. This makes sense that they're going to show the trailer, and even though it hasn't really been confirmed. It the amount of time, and I know that a lot of people are thinking, well, why not, why not D23? Maybe that's when they're going to hold out to do it. 
But I think that's where the heavy focus is going to be on Rogue One mm -hmm. because they can't promote Rogue One yet because of the deal yep. with Rogue Nation. So it makes sense. And there's no presence from Marvel this year at Comic-Con. So Star Wars hasn't had a presence at Comic-Con in a very long time as far as footage goes. Last year was all about Rebels. This year it's going to be about Force Awakens and it makes sense. Why not get our, our first trailer? I think the first trailer, by the way, will drop. Um, and then the, the, very similar to what they did at Celebration, will drop. The whole internet will get it. But then I think they're going to show, and this is to credit to both Tiffany and John Roca from Far, Far Away, who were talking about getting footage earlier. And I was like, I don't know if they're ever going to show footage at a con. I changed my tune here. I think that they might actually show footage because I think that's what Hall H will get. Yeah. Yeah. And whether or not that's going to be because Andy Serkis will be there or you were saying on Movie Talk today, some of the new cast. I still um, haven't really heard anything about Donald. Well, that's what I was going to say. So, Tiffany, out of everything you're hearing so far from this Hall H thing, what do you expect from Comic-Con, and what do you hope to see? I mean, I think I keep going back to that Kathleen Kennedy said, you're not going to find out everything just on a panel stage. So I think that the fact that they're pushing the Hasbro panel that's going to happen and that we're going to get toys and things that maybe they don't even really talk about, that's going to tell us a lot about what's going to happen in the story. I still think we're going to get extra footage at the panel. Um, I definitely think it has 100% to do with the fact that Marvel's not going to be there this year, that they're like, we're not really pushing something on this Disney side, so it can be all Star Wars related. We can make sure that we get all the talent there and really blow this out of the water and still show that, yeah, we can do Star Wars Celebration, right. but we can still kill it at Comic-Con. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I think Harrison Ford's gonna be there. I've been telling. I've been having this battle with you, and I. He's gonna be there. It's not gonna happen. It's just. I, I don't think Harrison. What do Ford I get himself, if he shows up there? I'm playing the role of John Campy today. Not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, right. hey, I will say that Harrison Ford showed up for Cowboys and Aliens. He did. Right. right because that's they, what I've said. They, right. God he, say, he, if he's doing that, no. Then but he, they need to promote. They need to promote a movie nobody knew about. It's true. But I, he's I, excited I, about this again. I think. I think you're gonna see a, a big presence from the original cast, the new cast. Uh, I think uh, circus, and I actually think we're going to get the title for the second standalone. That's what I think might happen. You don't think that's going to happen at D twenty three? No, I think it, that we have a huge presence now at Comic Con. I think that we were supposed to get it at celebrations, and then that stuff happened with Josh Trank. So I think this would be the perfect time to announce it. I mean, it's the best. It's the best audience for it. Yeah, the wet blanket of me wants to just make clear that they haven't officially said that they're going to be showing any footage no. at all at no. Comic Con. However, having been to Hall H the last few years, when you see these huge panels and you see all these guests come out, I cannot imagine a scenario where you have a sold out Hall H where people wait in line overnight and they trump out Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams and some actors, and then they just say, "Okay, well, thanks for coming to the panel. It was fun to talk about this a little bit." They're definitely going to show us something now, whether that's a scene which I initially thought might be over a trailer or a new trailer entirely I, I i don't know i'm just so excited because i definitely think we're going to see some new yeah. footage i don't yeah. think we're going to get the title i think they're going to save a lot of the anthology stuff mm -hmm. for d23 the next month yep. i think mm -hmm. the trailer is a given i really do i think it's a lock that they're going to show a full trailer um footage i don't know i think that it's possible but the only thing that i could say maybe that the that the big three and the new cast comes out is because of days of future past panel that they did about two years ago well, they, in Avengers, when well, the, the Avengers, Avengers yeah, first Days got put together, it was before we ever saw anything, so they all just showed up there. Yes, yeah. but what Days of Future Past, that panel, what they did was they put all the old cast and all the new cast on one panel, and they yeah. had them all, and it was incredible. It was it just blew your mind. So to see the new cast and the old cast together, I just know that it's not that Harrison Ford isn't excited about this, because he is, but it, it's he doesn't he's very kind of socially awkward, and he doesn't like but going to these things. we've talked about this, we and I think that a lot of fans feel the same, maybe. That Harrison Ford might not make it through this one. Yeah. So if he doesn't, this what? is the last. That's totally me guessing. I've never read anything or no one said speculation, anything. Speculation, right? Speculation for sure. Okay. You've been watching but, the show apparently. <laughs> yeah. But if that is the case, this is the last time that it would be him coming in and doing a film where I mean, doing a panel that he's still part not of. Not necessarily because if if they ever do a young solo movie and he's like, there's a recollection or anything back. You never know. You that's never. That's true. You never know. So anyway, Mark, Harrison's what's next? Uh, well, Josh Trank, the Mercurial director uh, under so much controversy now is talking Star Wars yet again in his comments that are almost <laughs> coming back right. to. So wow, good. that wow. just so leaves oh, nothing man. to the imagination there. Yeah. But that's the way a lot of people thought of this is how did Josh Trank exit from Star Wars? Was it his decision? Was it somebody else's? Mm -hmm. He's come out and said that it was his decision that he just wanted to focus on making smaller movies and that's what he reiterated in his most recent comments. So Christian, do you buy these and do you also, does it lend more credibility to the fact that 
Simon Kinberg actually backed him up and said, look, he's a, he's a good guy and all this stuff that people are saying about him is simply unfair. Um, no, I don't buy it at all. Okay. Uh, at all. Uh, just from the way this whole thing planned out, what I do buy is that Simon Kinberg is a good dude and is trying to clean up a mess. Um, and the thing, what I bottom, and this is all speculation stuff, I don't, from what you hear, it seems like Josh Trank has a lot of issues that he's dealing with. Whether that's mental health stuff, I don't, I don't know. But whatever it might be, the guy's got some issues that he's dealing with. And that's sad, no matter the, whatever the case is. And I think that it's just going to, it's Simon Kinberg, maybe whether it's feeling bad or whatever it might be. He doesn't have a grudge against this dude and wants to kind of not cause any strife and just says, no, 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 it, it, this is unfair. The guy's a good dude because no one wants someone to lose a job. No one wants someone to fail if you're a good person, you know? And Kinberg, to me, seems like a good person. I just feel there's too much stink behind this. But, Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's they're in damage control right now and, uh, you know, just kind of settling the fans. And I, I agree with everything you said. I, I, I do believe something happened and, and Josh Trank lost the job. And I think it sucks. And I think Simon Kinberg is probably just like, hey, let's let's get that done and let's focus on the good and move forward. And I do feel bad for the guy. If Fantastic Four comes out and it just kills and it's brilliant, right. I think I think as a fan and a Star Wars fan and a comic book fan, we're all going to look back and go, oh, man, I wish he would have stayed on. Unless you – Unless – We don't know what happened, though. That's, that's we don't know problem. what happened. Yeah, that's a problem. Mark. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's dealing with mental health issues. Maybe he's just not good at raising dogs. We don't know what happened <laughs> in those hotel rooms. But I think that the Star Wars brain trust is very aware that you do not do your laundry in public, especially you air out grievances. It's not the right way to do it is through the press, particularly when you're already now you're no longer working with this guy. And it's a lot easier to look back and say, oh, you know what? If you break up with a girl and it's a, it's a fresh wound, it hurts. But a couple months go by and you say, you know what? Yeah, you I wish you the best of luck. I just don't personally want anything to do with you or professionally in this matter so i think they're handling it the right way and now we can all move on with our lives tiff trank just needs to stop talking yeah he <laughs> needs to stop coming out and saying more stuff because i really do think no matter what the situation was one disney is a smart company they don't want a stink on any of these movies so it's like okay they're not going to say he was awful to work with or he was difficult or anything they're going to be like okay it wasn't quite the right fit whether that's the truth or not and make it as clean and nice as they possibly can and every time he comes out and says something, I'm like, oh, don't put your foot in your mouth. Don't say anything else that makes you look bad because everyone's in your corner at this mm -hmm. point, the best way that they possibly can be. So, I mean, just just stop talking. <laughs> All right, <laughs> what's, uh, what's next? Well, Christian, when you and I were at Star Wars Celebration, we were on the last day and we went to that huge panel where Josh Trank was noticeably absent, but Gareth Edwards was on there and they were talking about Star Wars Rogue One, the first anthology film, and we couldn't believe that they showed footage from it. It turned out to be a teaser. There wasn't real footage. How did it look so good? Well, I'll tell you how, kids. They used new <laughs> cameras for it. They needed special technology to play it on the big screen. The reason for this is now apparent because the film will utilize this new cutting-edge camera. I don't want to get too techy, but it's something called an Ari's Alexa 65. It's a large format 6K resolution model of some other camera that's really popular and it's going to feel <laughs> like a new IMAX. Not only this, but also Rogue Nation, the new Mission Impossible film, were also filmed using mm. this camera. It may be the IMAX technology going forward. Christian, I don't think that you're not excited about this. I love this. and I, I mean, IMAX to me is my favorite form of watching movies in general, so an evolution of that, yeah. And from what we saw being there in the arena when they showed this footage, it, it even the leaked footage when it was leaked, it looked cool. Imagine what it <laughs> looked like there on the big screen at this hall in Anaheim, and I lost my mind and I got goosebumps and I felt like it, it was it was just it was also the way the whole thing was cut, but it was the way that it looked. And this was just something they threw together for celebrations. So I can only imagine what this is going to look like. But Tiffany, what do you think about so this? The first time we're going to see anything from this camera is for Rogue Nation, right? Right. Yes. Okay, so obviously I'm going to be excited to go see it and see how I feel about it then because I didn't get to see the footage at Celebration. It was cool. Wah, wah, you left wah. early. Yeah, we were there. It was yeah. cool. Yeah, it was, but my only, I, I <laughs> don't <laughs> think, whatever, I'm just going to change the subject because I don't want to start crying I wasn't show, there either, okay? Tiffany. I feel your pain. No you could tears. have had a past few, no too. No tears. No, <laughs> um, But uh, when The Hobbit came out, in the new form, mm. I didn't enjoy it. Mm. Right. So I have a little bit of hesitation when it's some, I'm, I'm like an old lady where I'm like, you don't like change. I don't know, let's see if I really like, eh, I'm a little hesitant, we'll see. Obviously, 
fingers crossed we get to go to a screening and usually if it's the screening it's like you get to see it in whatever the new format is um so I'm optimistic because I don't think that JJ or anybody on this team is going to do something that's a misstep so they've probably I mean obviously been looking at the footage and it looks incredible right. so else um yeah this is such exciting news to me i do agree with you that you're always concerned that they're going to do like a 48 frames thing we're not it's yeah. not universally loved some people like the 48 frames other people didn't everybody seems divided as well on 3d and how that technology is used but i think universally across the board people love watching movies in imax especially if you get there early and you sit from the middle all the way to the back is the way to do it. I hope. And on the edge, not next to anyone if you're Mark Ellis. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I got I to gotta have quick access to the bathroom. So, yeah, this is great. And when we saw this technology, like I got an iPhone 6, and the first thing I did was see how the new camera is. This is the coolest version right. of that. That they, they went out to the woods, they filmed some stuff, and they showed it to us, and it turned out to be pretty awesome. Yodi? Yeah, uh, uh, advances in technology, good. I want to see this. IMAX, good. I like how you're saying it like Caesar from Planet yeah, of the Apes. Every, yeah, well, you know, they should do War of the Planet of the Apes in that yeah. then. Um, no, I'm excited. I, and I think we're getting a different kind of new advancement in technology, not 48 frames. Yeah. I don't think it's a frame uh, a ratio or whatever it may be, and I don't know. But if we're talking IMAX and it's an advance of that, I was saying this uh, off air, uh, a Star Wars war movie on this, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'm going to line up now. That's where I was going I with think it too. They said some; they might have used these cameras, or it's the same cinematographer that did Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, that's... Well, but, but just that, that's what gets me. Is yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. Is the fact that what a Star Wars movie? I've never seen a Star Wars movie in an IMAX or cameras like this before. To know that this whole world is going to be painted, even this test footage, where if you didn't know what the test footage is, where you just have the the Tie Fighter flying over like this planet. That alone, I believed every thing was real i believed that it was happening and i can and that was only a matter of like a minute it, for for 120 minutes or 125 minutes whatever it is i i'm gonna lose my mind yeah all right mark what's next well we got some comments from some of the stars of the force awakens adam driver and damal gleason two people that we haven't heard that much about what they have to say obviously they can't <laughs> say much but what driver had to say was that with jj abrams this wasn't an effects based film and how we're going to sell it that way it's more about story and character which is pretty neat damal gleason was being interviewed by some chick named angelina jolie and he said when he first heard about the film and he was approached about it he panicked because he didn't know how to feel about it. He had to read the script. They let him read the script, and he ended up showing up for the table read the next day. Christian, what's your takeaway from these two interviews? Um, I like the Donald Gleason one more than Driver because the Driver one is pretty much like the paper that all the publicists handed out and said, <laughs> when anyone asks you about something, you say this, because that's what everyone has said so far. JJ's using practical effects. JJ's going back to this. Yeah. Great. That's fine. He's a, He doesn't want to get in trouble, so I'm not, you're not. you don't get mad at him for that, but with Donald Gleason, it's like, okay, we're finally getting a little bit more from him to where he's like, I, it, it almost, without saying, because of prequels, I was worried about that, <laughs> and, and I was worried about prequels, and who knows, because it, it, it does have, it's what everybody, the majority of Star Wars fans have a, a worry about, because we've been let down in the past, yeah. but when he reads, it, to hear him say, I read the script, and then the next day I was at the table read, I love it, but Yodi? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, it's, a, it's, a sign, it's a good sign. If, and, and this is a very well-respected uh, actor, somebody that takes his parts very seriously. If he says, hey, I don't care if it's Star Wars. I need to see the script. And, they, and he sees the script, and then he's like, oh, I'm there. Yeah, I, I sign me up. And, and I totally agree with you. Yeah, dri Driver, what he said, they're all saying it. And I'm, I've been excited ever since J.J. Abrams said it. So... Practical effects, great. <laughs> Less technology, whatever. Ne like C uh, CGI, great. You know. Well, you know, what, real quick on that was because because I also want to make it clear because we were talking about this. I think uh, the other day on movie talk with, I don't. I, we're going to get a lot of CGI in this movie, and that's yeah. sure. But it, it's a matter of the balance. Yeah, is what I want it because like when when you have something like the original Lord of the Rings, which is it's here, and then you have the Hobbit, which is here. That's where you run into problems. Yeah, and same thing. Original Star Wars. Yeah. Prequels. Prequels. Yeah. So as, that's that's the comment. But Tiff, what do you think of these comments? I mean, uh, just jumping off of your point, I think that a good example of that, I liked what they did with Jurassic World. I feel like there is CGI, but they also used um, animatronics and they used performance capture. And so there was a lot of good balance that I feel like everyone's just going to keep going along that way. And there is a lot of stuff going back to using as many practical things as they can, especially with locations for right. the films. That's so much stuff that we're hearing. But um, with Driver, I feel like, yeah, definitely is the safe answer. It's okay. Kind of anything that he says at this point, I'm still excited because right. we don't know that much about his character. Um, and then with Donald, the two things that really stood out to me, one was the fact that in that same interview, Angelina Jolie said, 
says, I'm a huge Boba Fett fan. Yes. And <laughs> could, does he have a missus? Because I would totally want to be in the films. Wow. And you're like, then I immediately think, how cool would it be for Angelina to direct an anthology? I would love that. I, I think see her that do, would be really cool. I want to see her do one more because I didn't love Unbroken. But Time, I want to see, see her do one more and then, and, and then before I give her an anthology. Okay. And yeah. then the second thing was that he said he read the script and said yes the night before the table read. That is some serious turnaround. Yeah. Like either they were pretty sure he was going to say yes or what were they going to do at the table read the next day? Who was going to read the role? They could have had somebody. I mean, they could have had Harrison Ford do it again like he did the first time. And he got the role uh, for uh, yeah. for Harrison Ford. He he (laughs) turns into Eddie Murphy in The Nutty Professor. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I personally like when actors just shut up. I loved Adam Driver's comments. I look, I like to hear about your experience on the movie after the movie already comes out. I get very nervous when actors start yapping their gums about, oh, this movie, especially when there's a shroud of secrecy. That's why, you know, if you have a huge panel in San Diego, I hope that Carrie Fisher doesn't spend too much time at the Fox Sports Bar and Grill before the panel because I don't need to know too much about this. Movie until I actually see the movie, then you can tell me all about your experience. It doesn't making. matter because halfway through it, she's going to wind up making out with somebody anyway. That's what she <laughs> did at Celebration. Hopefully, that guy's good made. for no. Carrie. All right, Mark, what's next? All right, well, something I like even less than actors talking is stunt doubles <laughs> talking. But oh, here stop. we go. Adam Driver's stunt double in The Force Awakens is a Hungarian fellow named Toth Gilula. <clears throat> good job. In an interview for the local <laughs> site, he discussed his experience <laughs> making and he gave away some tidbits about using the cross guard lightsaber, how that is going to affect your range of motion when you're filming a scene. Now, this guy, he's no stranger to big blockbuster movies. He was also working on Avengers 2, and actually he was working on that when he got the call for The Force Awakens. So, Christian, this is the guy. This is the guy doing all those cool moves, wearing the mask. What do you think about his comments? Whatever. He doesn't give any... I don't think he gave anything away. And I think... I I just like the idea that the more and more we seem... It seems to me that Kylo Ren is going to be the Darth Vader of this series. That's what it seems like so far. So even now... This Hungarian guy, blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. When, when we when we talk, his name sounds like if you could actually pronounce it, it looks like a name that should be in Star Wars. <laughs> right, exactly. So <laughs> when, when this guy, um, right now, it's almost like, is this David Prowse? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is, this oh, our, is this our David Prowse? That's funny yeah, because right now we don't know who this guy is, but he might be a guy. This is one of his first interviews of the guy who played Kylo Ren. It seems like it. So it's kind of cool to get those early interviews. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, he talked. He, he said, uh, I, I, what I did notice when he said, he, like, when he saw the cross guard lightsaber, he said, what is this, medieval times or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is? But that as they got into the filming and some of the stunt choreography, that it started to work and he started to be like, oh, this is pretty cool. And that he, I, I believe he said something, uh, you know, they were asking between like the prequels and like that kind of lightsaber duels versus the original trilogy. He said it's kind of like both kind of mixed. I can't remember. I'm probably misquoting, but. You know, I'm excited. I I just I kind of am this great, great. Shut up! I want to see the movie yeah. now. Tell yeah, us. he also had some interesting comments to say about how lightsabers are used in this movie and that they have a crucial role. That the reason there's a reason right. why you named the movie The Force yeah. Awakens is lightsabers play a, a huge role, not just with the you know psh, wah, and fighting. I think it's also the relic hunting angle that you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I think that you and I talked about this about a year ago. I still think that, we, especially now with the title of Force Awakens, that we're getting Sith armies versus Jedi armies. Yep. I think it's going to happen for sure. So maybe that's part well, of. Well, and it. if you look at the comics, I mean, you're. Seeing Seeing that the force is being able to be used by um, different people that are not necessarily force sensitive. So it's like there's a totally new way of looking at the force. I mean, the cool thing that I took away from it was I think that a lot of times you don't really hear like a couple years ago, you didn't really hear about stunt doubles or who they were, what they were doing. There was a moment where he says, like, how was Adam? And he's like, oh, he hugged me at the end, like gave me a massive hug. And I'm like. Adam realizes the fact that if Kylo Ren blows people's minds, it has a lot to do with his stunt double. Totally. Yeah. Because those yeah. fight scenes, he's all covered up. It's not Adam Driver you're seeing. So I In think some that of it. That we was, don't know we don't know if it's completely Yeah. The, all well of it, yeah. the the action fight sequences, all I'm of sure. It? We don't know. I mean Well. Okay, yeah. I mean, Tom Cruise is hanging off planes. And he's True, but Adam Driver's not coming out and saying, that's me there. Right. But either way, I think it's having a respect for the person who's doing the yeah. stunts for you and making your character look that much cooler. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. What's next? All right. Well, if the name Toth Gaiola sounds like it belongs in the Star Wars universe, how about this for location? Skellig Michael Island. That's mm-hmm. the place. It's somewhere in Ireland or off the coast of Ireland yeah. where they filmed some of The Force Awakens. There's a little bit of controversy there because there's it's a very sensitive ecological habitat. And so the Irish government wasn't crazy about them going in the first place. And now it appears that the crew wants to go back there to do some more filming so i as as nervous as everybody who's conscious of the environment is and they want them to be appreciative of the sensitive things that are going on around there if we can get more star wars footage here is that a good thing or a bad thing christian i think it's a great thing because the question is i now is this for reshoots is this for anthology it doesn't really say Mm -hmm. um i hope it's for anthology not that that means anything if it is for reshoots it means they just have maybe another scene they want to place in there or they wanted to do some particular photography which is fine but if it's anthology stuff, that's great because it means that they're going to be using this for other locations that fit the mythology. Well, if they can get it the second time. <laughs> I think they're going to get it. I, th- I, th- I think that that's one of the main things. I think that this report was the fact that they're in pretty good negotiations that it's going to happen. Right. right? Well, well, something. there were rumors back in 2014 that they, the crew wanted to go back and that the government said, no, you can't go back. And I think that yeah. they're ironing all those things right. out. The the most intriguing yeah, one, thing... One guy said to another guy, Star Wars slapped him around all over. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, they, they said that initially the crew members that were present on the set during this were Mark Hamill mm-hmm. and Daisy Ridley. So could this be where old Luke Skywalker is just chilling, practicing his force yoga by himself before he returns to help the rest of the universe? Because I think the other thing about this island is, did it have like a monastery on it or something? Yeah, it's like got some cool some stuff on there. Like ruins on there that is par- also part of why they want to make sure that filming there is okay. Because, I mean, you bring on a whole crew f- to shoot it's going to do some damage to the land. And right. it's like, if we keep letting them come back, it's only going to keep getting a little bit worse. So, but the exciting part of that is I do think there's potential that this is where he's hanging out. What a great or, place to go on vacation. Yes, yeah, seriously. Yeah. There's or no this is there. where it's they pretty teach small. Daisy. Could be mm. like her training grounds. Yeah. I like think? that. Yeah. I, I, I would love to see uh, Daisy Ridley's character training ground, of, yeah. you know, Luke doing Obi-Wan and Yoda and bringing that all together. And you kind of touched on this. It'd be interesting we don't know if it's reshoots. We don't know if it's part of Force Awakens. What if, you know, uh, Ryan Johnson is there and kind of yeah. scouting out and filming some plates That's for a great point. episode eight? Yeah. You know, we don't know. And and it would be great if it was in the anthology as well to tie it all together. Right. We have a connected universe now, which is the most exciting for all of us geeky Star Wars fans. So, you know, sign me up and I want to live there. That's the best point so far. Episode eight. I mean, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, because if you need if you need it to whatever, wherever they had him from, maybe Ryan Johnson who's writing the script goes, I love that part of the yeah. script. I, I'd like to go back. Can we yeah. go back there? And then they're like, all right, well, that was a headache, but let's <laughs> let's go see if we can do it. Yeah, let's knock make, it out now. Right, yeah. because it makes sense. Right. That's a great point. Episode yeah. episode eight probably makes the most sense, to be honest. It's also like as we keep going forward, it's going to get harder and harder to guess what is being shot where. Right, Because right. there are all these movies going on. Before, it was like, oh, it's only The Force Awakens. Now it's like... Is it an anthology? Is it the first one? Is it the second one? Is it episode eight? We don't know. And look at it this way, though, too, because I was thinking about this. Like, you can look at episodes seven, eight, and nine almost as like Avengers films, meaning that this is where all the stars come for that. Mm -hmm. Because, and starting with the Avengers films, you know, like imagine Marvel had started with just the Avengers films and then the Thor movies and the Iron Man movies. So, who's to say down the line? That Kylo Ren couldn't have a standalone movie, oh, or sure, Daisy sure. Ridley couldn't have a, sta- a standalone movie. You know, so it's just I think it's going to be how Force Awakens hits because even if there's a movie planned for let's say 2020 or whatever it is, if a character resonates with fans, say the way Boba Fett did, mm-hmm. right? Don't be surprised that I go. Wait a minute, let's hold back because we could make this dude's character or this lady's character really pop here so that's very possible in this new Star Wars universe we live when in. you're gonna start getting writers and directors that come to them and say hey this character is really standing out and writing like spec scripts and things where they're like okay maybe this is the perfect time and this is the perfect script because fans like are getting to see the movies and getting to come up with their own ideas and right. see if they're incorporated into everything yeah uh, or perhaps Skellig Michael Island is where C-3PO dyed his arm red. That's hey. the last news story we have today. Is <laughs> nice. C-3PO is going to have a red left arm in the new films, and we got a great look at it from this toy. So much Star Wars news is delivered through the toy releases. So, kids, what do we think about C-3PO having a red real. arm? It, this is not you don't real. think it's real? No. They said they show the bottom of the can, and it only has the Star Wars logo. There's not the Disney logo with mm. it. 
Um, so mm. I don't think that this is a legit piece of Star Wars. Wow, Sherlock stuff. playing the violin hey. over here. I, I don't disagree with you, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it is legit because the one thing that Star Wars gives us is everybody's got messed up arms and hands and legs and stuff too yeah. because from <laughs> there's rumors going around that Chewbacca like if you notice everything so far that we've seen in Chewbacca have you noticed this? Yeah stuff? I've noticed that. Everything in Chewbacca so far he does not you never see his arm. Yeah. You haven't seen his arm yet so and everyone's like it worked so well with Furiosa and Mad Max. <laughs> well, yeah, well right. Yeah. Well I think the concept the concept art that leaked a while ago had him in a, like a See, uh, 3PO, not 3PO, Chewbacca, that is, with a fake arm. Yeah. So, and now him with that one, who knows what this droid's gone through in the last 30 years? We exactly. don't know. But Ellis, would you care if he had a red arm? Uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> get a silver <laughs> boot in the first one. I'm, no. Look, I'm glad he's seeing some action. You know, it's, it's like he, there's some carbon scoring on him. The guy needs an oil bath. Somebody help him out. Get him back to his Master Luke Skywalker on that Irish island. Get him a drink. And for God's sakes, get his gold coat back. Do yeah. you care? I, no, I don't care, and, and we don't know exactly. Right. Thirty years have passed. He might have gone back to Bespin and got another one in the noggin, and you know, <laughs> blew him up again. And oh, this time, oh, uh, red arm. You know, right. we don't know. And it kind of that's the charm of three PO. You even said he had the silver foot at one point. You know, this is a protocol droid that now has been around for what a hundred years. When it's yeah. all of a sudden since done. Darth Vader built yeah. since Darth Vader. Oh. Yeah, well, not a hundred years, but you know. So and and d great. Let's see it. But again, let's roll the movie. Yeah, exactly. It could just be like a rusty arm. All right, that's it for the Star Wars movie <laughs> stories. There were a lot of them today. Now, the next section of the show is simply what we call What's the Deal with Canon? Um, these are all the stories that are happening in the world of the canon. Well, that means anything that links back to the Star Wars movies ultimately. And that could be the books, that could be the comic books, the video games, short stories, whatever it might be, the toys, everything that links back to the movies. Um, and what I will say, there's two things that we're not going to talk about today that we will probably talk about next week. The first is that the newest issue of Canaan actually came out. We got it too late. We didn't have a chance to read it yet, so we'll review that next week. And then I, thank you to Del Rey, got, have an early copy of Dark Disciple, which is the book with Asajj Ventress, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Asajj Ventress and Quillen Voss. What I will say here about it so far is that it was the book that I was probably looking forward to the least. Um, I am really enjoying this book so far. I'm only about 100 pages in, but I'm really digging it. That's all I can say. But what is the first actual story of today? We're going to talk about Star Wars Uprising, and this is a game that's going to be available for mobile devices, and it takes place in the period between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, which means we're actually going to get our first canon glimpse of what a post-Battle of Endor future looks like. We've already taken care of the second Death Star. What's new for our heroes and for our villains? Are Ewoks still drumming on <laughs> evil people's helmets? Christian, yes. your take. Um, I am really looking forward to this thing more and more and more and I, it just kind of came out of nowhere. It just yeah. popped out of nowhere. Like We were asking a mysterious character last week, who is that guy? What's yeah. his deal? We already know. His name is Imperial Governor Adelhard. And okay, it sounds pretty great to me. It's like, <laughs> yes. okay. okay, he's he's the guy who has heard the emperor is dead. Said, well, we got to squash that real quick. Mm -hmm. Got to nip this rebellion. They didn't win. We're gonna figure it out. He's the new baddie. Okay, let's see exactly what happened. And like the article said, I think in Star Wars Seven News was that. It's not the same retelling of certain Star Wars stories or famili familiar stories that we've seen in the past. This is a brand new take, and we haven't seen. This is we thought that. Um, aftermath was going to be the first mm -hmm. we hear of, and it's going to be this now. This is the first thing. Get it on your phones. I'll be getting it. I can't wait. Yeah. But Riley, what do you think? <laughs> uh, yeah. And I mean, you know, Return of the Jedi ends, and it's a happy ending. And you're like, you think the Emperor just falls, and the Rebels take over, and and everybody talked about the New Republic. What I loved so much about this was was that guy uh, just going, oh, we got to squash this. No, the Empire is not fallen. Let's get rid of that that hologram of the Death Star blowing up. That didn't happen. I love him. Like It's, it's so uh, indicative of the Empire for him to s try to feed this lie right. and keep it going and keep, keep the Empire faithful, loyal. I mean, yeah, sign me up, man. I'm there. Ellis. 
Uh, yeah, I, I agree. This is all, this might be the game. I don't play a lot of mobile games. I play Words with Friends at 5150 Alice if you want to dance. And I think something like this is like, I, even Star Wars, I don't get too into the story-based games because it is, they're so time-consuming. But the fact that this is a mobile game is very intriguing. Is can you, how much can you earn quickly from it? The biggest question I have of all is, it, is, is that Bosk and does he wear shoes now? It is not Bosk. The, character, <laughs> the character's name is Brask. Um, it's which close. Is the same it's race, brother. Yeah. Which is the same race as the bounty hunter boss. No idea which faction Brask is with, but what I have seen, this is what they write here, he looks to be a smuggler type and could be a pilot for the Trade Spine League. But Tiffany, you've read like, these character synopsis and everything so far for this. What are you thinking about this? I mean, app? the teaser that came out looked awesome. Yeah. I initially thought, one, I'm going to play this game. Two, this would be a really cool animated series yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, and so I think we're going to start getting a little bit more here and there. I feel like it wasn't necessarily, in my mind, straight out of left field because E3 is coming up. So any gaming stuff that they've been holding on to is going to start coming out. Right. I'm hoping that we get some access to some of the Star Wars mm. games at E3, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which is next week. But I think that, you know, it's interesting when they bring in characters that you don't know because there is the Empire and the galaxy is so big that this guy is could be in some section that we've never even right. seen before. So I think it's cool that we get to meet and play as characters that we've never experienced before. Yeah, it just paints it's just gonna paint what the universe is gonna look like like you said, Riley, after Jedi leading into The Force Awakens. Because when we hit from the end of August, September, that's when the journey to The Force Awakens mm -hmm. stuff happens. Like the books, the games, the comics, all we're going to... Yep. We're going to start devouring this stuff. Like this show is going to be all about. We're not already. But, but I mean, devouring, <laughs> devouring this era. This era. We're, of, we're, yeah. we're, we're getting little tidbits now. We right. actually get like a nice appetizer. We get some we get chicken a whole wings. Steak. But, exactly. But I think what this really shows is Lucasfilm oh, yeah. and st the story groups. Um, the precision on mm -hmm. the way that they want they showed you rebels because it's still a familiar time period but yet they filled in things mm -hmm. that you didn't know like how did the rebellion start and all that stuff and that's what you got and even where kane in the comic books hit in the clone wars era and everything that you're seeing is stuff that we've seen before but yet still filling in places that we didn't know but this stuff this is uncharted territory yeah. we we don't we don't know what's gone down and from everything, the artwork, it all looks like it leads into December 18th, 2015. Yeah. Love it. All right, Mark, what's next? Well, just because Joss Whedon and Josh Trank aren't great at using Twitter, that doesn't mean the rest of us can't have some fun on it. One of the things revealed through Twitter this week was that Anthony Daniels will be voicing C-3PO, <laughs> old Red Arm himself, in Star Wars Battlefront. It's still unclear as to how big of a role or what C-3PO will be doing in Battlefront, but we got so excited when we saw the Battlefront trailer. This thing drops in November of this year. Christian C-3PO. It's the real one. What do you think? I, I always say even before The Force Awakens was announced, he's the one guy that I, we did a Star Wars fantasy draft. I picked him first because he'll <laughs> do right. anything Star Wars. Like, yeah. it was, it, whatever it is, he'll do it. Now he's con contractually has to do it anyway. But um, uh, it's cool to have him in there. It, just, it adds the it, – it's authentic. You have him in there, and it's great. You hear C-3PO's voice. I'm, I can't wait to play Battlefront, but I'm – not as excited as I was before. I'm way more excited for Uprising. Really? Because, because the, there's the game. There's no canon in there now, which is okay. Which is okay because like there's, there's actual. They even said the storyline and stuff. Th there's not really going to be much of the storyline that actually is canon. Nothing in it is canon because it's just nothing happens. Yeah. So I can't wait to play as a Star Wars fan. But as far as furthering the story. I'm not as excited, but Mark? I, I actually like the fact that it's not canon. I'd like all the video games to not be canon because, look, I don't have time to play all these video games, and there's video games have become such an expansive universe. Look at something like Mass Effect. All this stuff that goes in there, World of Warcraft, you could not possibly say 100% all this stuff is definitely canon. So I like the fact that Battlefront's just saying, hey, it is, some of it's going to be canon. They got the Planet Jacuzzi in there, so some of it <laughs> right, is going to be canon, right. but we're not necessarily saying that Boba Fett it climbed out of the Sarlacc pit necessarily. So right, you can just use him. Right. right. And, and Anthony Daniels, to his credit, he's always around. He is such a great ambassador for Star Wars. In 1977, when they first had the premieres, it was C-3PO and R2-D2 that helped sell that movie to kids because they're like, look at these robots. Who are these guys? And to this day, that guy still shows up. Anytime you call his name, you say it three times, he's going to appear. I think that's a great credit to the franchise. Tiff, you like that he's back? I do like that he's back. I mean, I think it's you watch Rebels, and as soon as you get an original character's voice, in it, it just brings you back to the original film. So I think anything that he's in that he does the voice, you're like, it inevitably feels like, okay, this is Star Wars. Right. Um, I think the confusing thing is that it's like, 
the game is canon, but it's just not going to further the story. Right. So there's nothing in it that when you're playing, you're like, oh, this changes this and this here. But the so thing now is, I need to play it. Some to of it know isn't that. though, because if like if Darth Vader shows up and fights on Endor the, during the time period, that's it's, where I feel like it's gonna get so it's, con- gonna, get it's gonna get confusing. But that's for why people. that's why the people that are making the game were already saying like, oh no 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 no, no wait wait wait, like Mark said. There are planets that are canon, like yeah. Jakku, and then there's another planet. I feel Solust, I think, was the other one. Sure, it sounds right. Uh, the, the, <laughs> so, am I am I wrong? If I'm yeah, I I just Jakku, uh, the the planet, and yeah, I'm not sure the story. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, what I would say about Battlefront is check your canon heads at the door. Yeah. Pick Darth Maul if you can play yeah. him and go kill some Ewoks. I mean, <laughs> just do it. Have or fun. you can be Ewoks yeah. and try to kill Darth Maul. Uh, sure. Yeah, right. but I mean, it is. It's just fun to go play in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. That's what Battlefront is. That's what I did when I would go with like Han Solo and play on the the Genosian uh, right. part in the last one. I don't know what I did, but it's just fun to just inhabit those characters. You get all the the vehicles and the lightsabers, and you just go blow stuff up. Right. Fun. I'm in. All right. right. Putting the putting the the power back in the player's hands necessitates that it cannot be canon. If yeah. I'm Han Solo yeah. and I go impregnate some smuggler babe on some foreign planet, I'll, I'll necessarily show up in the comic Solo. book. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Okay. The last story. Did you guys hear that? Ah, it's probably just another drill. We get a first good look at the Black Series First Order Stormtrooper, and man, these guys look like they have been through some target practice. Christian, we love getting news through the toys, especially the way these yeah. guys look. Do you think that they look more menacing than the old Stormtrooper? Absolutely, and I think that they will be. Everything you've seen so far in the mm-hmm. trailer makes it look like wh- whoever, maybe this regime that we see in Uprising. Said, can we get some guys that can shoot? <laughs> yeah. and, and they and they find and and it and looks they can like, actually move. And they suits. can move it. Like these guys actually. I mean, look. From what we know, I don't know. It's confirmed. John Boyega said he was a stormtrooper. John Boyega is going to be a guy that's a badass. We assume. We yeah, think sure. this was a guy that originally was a stormtrooper. So if he made the cut and he was a stormtrooper, you know, unless he said, you know, these guys are morons. I'm going to be a Jedi. <laughs> um, but I think it's it's the fact that it like, looks like they're going to be. Pretty menacing, whether it's be led by Snoke, um, whether it is, they're, they're run by Kylo Ren. This is a menacing look. I'm digging it, Riley. Yeah, I, did, I, you know, when we first saw the images of them, there were some leaked images. I mean, the first thing I did was like, oh, cool. So, yeah, these guys look, I mean, it's a great evolution of the design. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm, I want to buy this, this figure and put it on my <laughs> wall somewhere. <laughs> Tiff? Um, I'm kind of thinking and hoping that this is going to be a Comic-Con exclusive. We don't know what Star Ooh. Wars is going to do as far as the Hasbro toys or anything that's coming out that's San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. This would be an awesome one to start you with. You mean like reveals of toys and stuff, new ones? No, like ones that you can only get at Comic-Con. Oh, 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 oh like, okay, okay. Go on the awesome toy blog because that's what I'm going to be doing oh, to make cool. my list of what I want from Comic Con. Can I give but you I my think- list? <laughs> 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 Dear Santa Claus yeah. slash Tiffany. <laughs> Dear Santa Comic Con Claus. Um, but I think that would be really cool because this is one of those characters that you know everyone had been waiting. You actually got to see them at Celebration. So I mean, it looks it looks awesome. I'm, I can't even. I'm just like wanting to look at you guys and talk, yeah, and I just keep staring cool. at it. Mr. Ellis. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, the, how much it looks like the old stormtroopers. That they're still keeping the empire alive. They're keeping that lore alive. They may have a new name, but this is still the same old bad evil empire that you came to know and love. They're not going to be great shots because there's a lot of them, and there's very few heroes, and they're not going to hit all those targets. <laughs> I think their shooting percentage is going to be a lot better. It's going to be more Steph Curry in the regular <laughs> season than in the final so far. So yeah, I'm on board, man. All right. Well, that's it. Now look, because we have such a full cast council today and ironically enough we're not going to do address the council because <laughs> it, we wanted to have a lot of conversations about the stuff and we also wanted to get some of your twitter questions so we decided to go straight the council this week is going to be you guys we took a couple of twitter questions you guys have hashtag amc jedi council over the last week or so and we picked those we're going to talk about them we're going to address them um before i do that i have a trivia question for you guys uh, what's up a trivia question you don't have, if you don't know it the answer is one one three eight um so Harrison Ford, mm. you guys all know his first role was like he was a bellboy, right? Did you yeah. That? He was a bellboy. You can find this on YouTube, by the way, too. Yeah. And he was a bellboy. <laughs> okay. And so he, he walks in, he has one line, and he, sa- he says, paging, paging Mr. Do you know what the guy's last name was that he said? He says, paging Mr. Paging Mr. Paging Mr. Herman. No, nope. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, Tiff? Spielberg. Do you know? Yes, I do. Because I told you. 
No, because I knew it anyway. Okay. What it's is famous, it? It's, it's famous in my deliver, family in particular. Deliver. The force is strong in my family. Paging Mr. Ellis. <laughs> Paging Mr. Ellis. Oh, Paging Mr. Ellis. Watch it up on YouTube. And you can see my dad in the background. That's not so <laughs> Okay, here we go. So now you guys have submitted your questions. We're going to pick a Mark, what's the first for today? Okay, the first one comes from Oliver Meyer. Will the fan reaction... Oop. That is a different question. A Christopher different at Buena Vista 28 says, Iger said Star Wars will have a big presence in the theme parks. Will you guys discuss that aspect as well? Go ahead, yes, Jeff. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So the first thing that they uh, did was... By the way, you're a theme park junkie. Oh my gosh, okay. I love Disneyland. Like, okay. it's my job to love Disneyland. <laughs> um, the first thing that they did, they added the Force Awakens stuff to World of Color. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you've seen World of Color, it's awesome, one. But two, now that Star Wars is involved, even cooler. They have Death Star balloons <laughs> at Disneyland now. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. Seen that. So wow. these are like some of the small things that have started happening. And they're doing a lot also because of the 60th anniversary that's going on right now. Um, but I, I think they'll probably add some stuff into Space Mountain. Um, I think all of Tomorrowland is going to up their Star Wars ante quite a bit. The awesome thing was the other day I was there, and you can go a lot. Um, but the little <laughs> shop in Tomorrowland, you can actually buy the Star Wars comics in Disneyland now. Oh, really? Wow. Which, wow. like, my mind was blown. I was like, if I was little and coming to Disneyland. But they're $800 a no, piece. No, they're regular. <laughs> they're regular <laughs> price. So it's literally like. You can go to Disneyland and buy your Star Wars. The comics. dad and you so came out like we're not. You can't have a funnel cake and a comic. You wanted you a soda one. and a churro. I'm not rich. <laughs> the force is not that strong. Right, right. Um, but yeah, so I think that they're definitely changing a lot. And then the other thing that they did was um, the Jedi training that they do. They had their first female doing the Jedi training. It usually, it was all guys right. doing it. And so that's changed over, which I think nice. has something to possibly do with some characters Oh, it absolutely does. It's gonna, you're going to see something. That's uh, going back again with the Jedi versus Sith. There's going to be the one thing, not the one thing, there were a couple things in, in well, in Clone Wars, maybe one thing, but that did did well, um, was not the, not the TV series, but the movie, Attack of the Clones. When oh, the, yeah. the cool there thing... Oh, yeah. There was something good? Yeah. It, it <laughs> was, there, there's something to be Kidding. said about Attack of the Clones when you get to see all those Jedi rush yeah, in with the great. sabers Absolutely. and to battle. Now, one of the cool things about the Old Republic, not Knights of the Old Republic, but the Old Republic video game was that those trailers that they showed and there was a battle between the Sith and the Jedi. And it's like, Oh, and there's, there's women, and there, there's, I mean, every, just really, there's so many of them, and I, I agree with you. I think because of the Force Awakens, yeah. it, a lot of people are going to be awakened to the Force. So there's going to be tons of women. Look at the strong characters so far that they've talked about, yeah. whether it be Daisy Ridley, uh, Gwendolyn Christie, even Princess Leia herself, you know, is going to yeah. be the queen, we yep. think. So, um, but as far as the theme park goes, this is one of the things that I missed when I went to Celebration. They had like a whole panel on it. Mm-hmm. I think that they've done the Harry Potter world. They've done all these things. I think Star Wars Wars is a franchise that is screaming for, they could do its own park, I think. You, yeah. No, you don't think so? I just, I mean, I think maybe in Disney World in Florida that could be something. Yeah. But at Disneyland, I think it will just keep incorporating into Right. But do you think the, there ever could be an actual Disney, I mean, a yeah. Star Wars land? I mean, I feel like they're going to want more space for Marvel World stuff as well. Yeah, and true. Star Wars at the same it's time. True. So, is that something that down the line, because there's a lot more space in Orlando right. than there is in Los, I mean in Anaheim, right. that they could build a full out new park? What do you think, Riley? Yeah, I mean, I, I love the little touches they're doing. I mean, I was there last year and they had already started. You know, mm-hmm. you could buy some Star Wars shirts, which I did. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm imagining Star Tours is going to be upgraded oh, sooner yeah. or later with some Force Awakens, at least planets. Yeah. You know, because they did that for the prequels. Yeah. So. I've never done Star Tours. What? What? I know. I know. Uh, Get, d- we're done here, yeah, folks. I know, uh, I know, I know. Christian Harloff has to Trust take me, leave. I, I took my daughter for her second or the third birthday last year, and it's like she's too little for it. And like you know, yeah. we so. don't take her. You drop her off at Small World, and then you say, "Okay, <laughs> yourself. Yeah. 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 by yourself." Yeah. I mean, look, if, if Harry Potter, Ron kids. Weasley, and his smoking hot friend Hermione can have their own theme park, there is no reason why Star Wars isn't going to have its own theme park very soon. Sure. Until that happens, this new the girlfriend has been wanting to go to Disneyland for a while. It's it's time to gas up the jalopy and get my tukas down there. If they yep. keep incorporating the Force Awakens stuff into the theme park, and by the look at the box office receipts for Tomorrowland versus what the Force Awakens is going to do. That thing is going to take over Tomorrowland yeah. until it gets its own space. Girlfriend. Okay. That, <laughs> She's that, right here. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> All right, Twitter. What next one? Uh, Oliver Meyer writes, Will the fan reaction regarding the married Han Solo situation... <sighs> 
affect its resolution? Has the new Canon failed us already? Collective, uh, not collective, but a big sigh over here from the man yeah. with the golden hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're it's gorgeous. Um, it's like James Bond hair. Now, to be fair, I haven't read the issue. Okay. Okay. I just heard about it, and uh, we talked about it. Yeah. Um, I will only buy it one way if it, if it was a whole ruse for Han Solo to like get something he had to like break in somewhere, and he needed a wife to make it look good. <laughs> That's the only reason I'll take it. I hope to God it does not affect The Force Awakens in any way. I don't want my Han Solo coupled. Even if John Boyega <laughs> turns out to be his son? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. I don't know. It just takes away from the original trilogy and him becoming the the he was solo. He was flying solo, and Princess Leia made him care again. Yeah. And there you go. So I yeah. Yeah, Tiff. I agree. I think that if, if they I okay, two things. One, no, I don't think that the fan reaction is going to change what they do with this storyline. I think yeah. that this storyline has been solidified. They knew exactly what they were doing with it. I, did, I think it's awesome, and I give Jason Aaron major props for being able to write this and knowing the reaction that he was going to get from fans. I hope that it's not something where they're like, oh, she's just crazy, and they weren't actually married. You hope it is? Or I is hope it? that it is not that. I want an actual story behind it, like you said, where it's like maybe he was somewhere, and it was like this is a ritual that they didn't know meant that they were married. Or oh, that's cool. Or he yeah, had to that. get somewhere, like you said, where it's like, to get off the planet, he had to marry this person, and he's like, I'm not actually marrying you, but, and then he leaves. And so the thing with it was the moment in the comic when the ship comes on, which looks a lot like the Millennium Falcon, does, yeah. which makes me think Lando, maybe there's a connection there. Mm. Um, maybe Finn is their kid, we yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, that he's like, oh no, like run, because he knew exactly who it was. So it's not someone who's making stuff up, um, so I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I'm I'm pretty confident in everything they've done so far, so I don't think they've misstepped. I think there's a thousand different ways to spin this positively or negatively. I'm going to wait until I get the full story to really you know, whine or praise the decision to do this. I did go on Twitter the day that I heard <laughs> about it, and I started tweeting some jokes about Han Solo and a nagging wife. One of the people who went in was Chris Taylor at Future Boy, who wrote How Star Wars uh, Conquered the Universe. And so we went back and forth with some jokes. And it's just so funny how well we know Han Solo that he is like our buddy who's yeah. getting married. We're like, dude, you're marrying that chick? Like, right, we found right. out our, our guy. My yeah. friend's getting married. It's like, no, nah, man, he's single. That's Han Solo. He's not supposed yeah. to be tied down by a wife. I want to see how it plays out before I make any other judgment. Remember that weekend that you were at the cantina and we didn't hear from <laughs> right, you? Right. You got married that weekend, bro? <laughs> the yeah. day I was bombed on blue milk? <laughs> yeah. He, he got a tattoo that weekend, too. He was right. like, oh, geez. <laughs> I, I agree with you guys. You got to let you got to let the story play out here. Yeah. But the one thing, the brilliance behind this, too, is guess how many copies are going to sell of that next issue? Yeah. yeah. Because they want to see where it ties up. Because they already sure. talked. The first, this one alone probably sold a lot. I'm mm -hmm. curious what the numbers were there on how it sold. But I'm with you guys. What I want to happen is I, I wouldn't mind the crazy angle of the just. But I, I think I I'd, I'd prefer the angle of like he was supposed to be my husband. We were promised to one another, and he never he never followed through on it. So she just kind of refers to herself. Doesn't necessarily have to be crazy, but just like refers as his wife. But it never went down. I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. then it still opens up to the fact that like, yeah, it just didn't work out that way. But if he was actually married, it changes. And we talked about this last last week. It it just changes so much on what he is. It kind of turns him into a scumbag a little bit too. Yeah. From that he's running around on his wife in episode four, kind of flirting on the, the princess and <laughs> and everything else, and just kind of bailed. Yeah. So he's kind of a deadbeat or whatever too. But let's see how it plays out. I agree. I'm not going to make any judgments yet, but that is that's an issue that I'm going to be looking forward yeah. to, and I'm sure a lot of people too. I asked at my comic shop. I was like, how many more people are coming in to shop? because of the Star Wars comics, and they were like, it's crazy how yeah. many more people yeah. are going into their local shops, which is awesome. I don't want it to be something that it's like crazy girlfriend, whatever, because then I feel like it is just a stunt that they did to get people to buy comics. Yeah. If it's actually part of the story that does something cool, then I'm going to be excited about it. Right. Okay, Mark, what's yeah. next? Cut to the cover of People Magazine where it's, I was married to Han Solo too. No, you weren't. Shut <laughs> up. Mm. Calder writes, hello all. My question is about canon. Since the Old Republic is no longer canon, does that include planets like Taurus? Oh, Taurus is is still canon because they they I can't remember what book it is. I want to I want to tell you that it was in Tarkin. Yeah, I think um, so. They mentioned it. I'm pretty sure it was Tarkin. They mentioned it in Tarkin. So that's the beauty. That's the thing is when when they talked about this when Leland Chi and 
and all these guys and Pablo Hidalgo announced that this was going to be a brand new way and the, the, the old stuff was now legends that anything though in those books can be cherry picked mm -hmm. and so if James Lucino who wrote Tarkin goes I like that planet of Taurus boom there it is it's back yep. and they can now play on that because it, it doesn't fit they've they've built so many worlds and cool worlds that they have all this stuff and this is at, at that canon panel at at um celebration they said that they have all this stuff it's just a matter of it's not that they're like oh all those ideas were terrible they're gone no they they, they acknowledge that a lot of that stuff is really cool and they probably will use it and that's the same to be said about characters too mm -hmm. i still believe that thrawn in some way or another is going to pop up in those in that 30 year period but mark what do you think about this i mean i'm not too familiar with old republic stuff the books i mean except for the bane trilogy which right. i i really enjoyed um i hope that they sooner or later make canon either a movie or a book that they revisit old republic and cherry pick some favorites yeah. maybe the planet's totally with you so well i guess we just have to wait and see Tip. I come from a place where I'm like, anything that happened before is wiped. And then if they bring mm -hmm. it in, then it's canon again. Right. Um, instead of going the other way, because I think you just end up shooting yourself in the foot being like, right. but I really like this. Is it possibly still canon? Well, just assume it's not. And then if you read it, then you're like, oh, cool, then it is. Because the other thing is, as you said, with cherry picking, it's like, they may name a planet that, but it might not have the same characteristics that it had True. in the Legends or sure. in the old games. There's a droid that's now canon, and he was in a novel in Legends called Darth Plagueis. All right. Ellis? I uh, had to say it. Shocking turn of events. I have nothing intelligent <laughs> to add to this conversation. You guys think Han went into the asteroid field because he just was sick of his wife? He was like, you know what? If I die oh, in this yeah. thing, it that doesn't it. matter. That I don't care. It. That's uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I get to keep the dog. Um, <laughs> all right. That's he it. Took the that's, dog. that's the council. You guys weigh in, by the way. We talked about a lot of different things. Always tell your opinions. Do you think that you're going to get a trailer at Comic-Con this year for The Force Awakens? Do you like the Han Solo angle? Do you think that Josh Trank got canned? Put every Everything that we talked about, put it in the comments. I'd like to thank the council today. First, it is Yodi himself. Mark, where can the good people find you? You can find me every day on uh, schmoesno.com and at Riley Around on Twitter. I'll just uh, update you with all my goodness. Paging Mr. Ellis. Paging it's great Ellis. talking Starship Troopers with you guys. You can find me online <laughs> at 5150 Ellis, Twitter and Instagram. Tweet me your favorite Han Solo wife theory, and let's have some fun with this. And <laughs> Tiffany Smith, where can they find you? You guys can find me on social media, Twitter, Insta, Facebook, Snapchat, at Tiffany's Tweets. Um, you'll see me on Schmo's No tonight. And then check out Fandango, because I did the premiere for Jurassic World, which was awesome. Well, uh, yeah, and, we'll speak and, far, far away and Far Far Away on Geek Nation, my Star Wars podcast. Well, speaking of Jurassic World, we actually got a chance to interview Colin Trevorrow. We're going to air that tonight. Awesome, on. dude. Big yeah. fan. Mm -hmm. So please go over to the YouTube.com slash Schmoes No and subscribe there. Check me out. Christian Harloff, Instagram, Twitter. And for you guys to get your questions on the air, please hashtag AMC Jedi Council. We look through them all week and choose some so we can talk about it on the council. I'd like to thank everybody today. I'd like to thank you guys. And as always, may the force be with you.